this seventh generation Fiesta has grown up a bit, but it hasn't lost the youthful, eager feel that endeared previous generation models to so many super mini buyers. Beneath the smarter styling lies some clever user-friendly technology and cabin quality that'll make downsizing into one of these less of a chore. This is how you write a bestseller. Variations on the Fiesta theme may come and go, but before driving any version of Ford's definitive Super Mini, there's one thing you almost always tend to know for certain, that it will be a great steer. This time around, the Blue Oval brand has sought to retain that traditional Fiesta attribute, yet at the same time introduce a standard of ride quality closer to that uh, that's delivered by arch rivals like Volkswagen's Polo. The feel you'll get from this Fiesta depends quite a lot on the variant of it you choose. That's because two quite different chassis configurations have been used across the range, with a firmer setup used for the various sporty ST models and a soft one featuring elsewhere in the range on the cars that the majority of customers are going to end up with. On such mainstream versions, this car isn't quite the sharp, eager thing we remember from before, but it can still offer a level of handling joie de vivre that's beyond anything its competitors can manage. And that's thanks to uh, improved steering, a lightweight body that's now usefully stiffer, and also an effective torque vectoring system that helps you to get the grip down in the corners. The effect of all this is dialed up to a useful degree if you opt for one of the sportier ST models, Fiesta variants that are more stiffly sprung, yet which still enjoy uh, most of the benefits of the suppler all new suspension setup that's responsible for a vast improvement in ride quality. Engine wise, all the volume petrol units are now three cylinder in configuration. Uh, the line propped up by a new 1.1 litre TIVCT power plant offered with either 70 or 85 PS. Most customers, though, will stretch to the 1 litre T turbocharged EcoBoost engine that we're trying here, and that's now available in either 100, 125, or 140 PS guises. We're trying the volume 100 PS derivative, which comes with an auto gearbox option, and which which in manual form is capable of 65.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 97 grams per kilometer of CO2. Elsewhere in the lineup, 1.5 litre engines dominate. There's a 200 PS petrol unit in the ST hot hatch, and diesel buyers get 85 PS and 120 PS 1.5 litre TDCI options that focus on frugality and which will be of particular interest to customers of the active crossover derivative that should widen the appeal of the range. So, everything's changed, but almost nothing is different. Now, if you know anything about this car, then come face to face with it. That might be your first perspective on this seventh generation Fiesta's design. It was certainly ours. Now, Ford certainly could have done something radically new. In fact, in many ways, though, they have. Dimensionally, after all, this is actually quite a fundamentally altered product. Uh, it's 17 millimeters longer, 13 mils wider, and 20 millimeters lower than before. Plus, virtually every constituent part of this car is different. You can see, though, why the brand wanted the look and feel of this Super Mini to stay much the same. Uh, the company's European design director, Joel Piskowski, says that he wanted to evolve the styling in a way that would make it more contemporary without losing the essential fiestiness that customers love. And that's what's been delivered. All this is welcome, but as we've been saying, much of the improvement's invisible. Time to take you to a part of the car where the changes really are very evident. Here at the wheel... It's quite different, isn't it? There are flush, seamless surfaces, soft-touch plastic coatings and neat splashes of chrome. Plus, it all seems to have been very well screwed together by the factory in Cologne. Other than that, the first thing you'll probably notice is the infotainment system that now sprouts in freestanding form from the top of the centre console. Uh, the screen options vary depending on the model or options that you choose. There are 14.2, uh, 6.5 or, as in this case, 8-inch sizes, all featuring pin-sharp graphics, logical menus and uh, fast processor speeds. 
Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, if you come to this car fresh from ownership of the previous generation model, then it's likely you'll view Ford's greater efforts in this part of the cabin in a positive light. There is, after all, 16 millimetres more knee room than there was before, plus the seats are softer and they offer greater side-to-side -side support. Should you be trying a Fiesta having sampled a more spacious Super Mini rival, though, and there are plenty, then you'll probably be a little less inclined to be quite so generous. Finally, we're going to take a look in the boot. The extra body length has allowed the cargo area to be 17 litres larger than it was before, now rated at 292 litres for both body shapes. Now, that figure is only average by class standards, but if you are able to flatten the 60-40 split-folding rear backrest, you'll free up one of the better total capacity figures in the class, uh, 1,093 litres. The Ford Fiesta has always been a vehicle the British public has warmed to, but the truth is that before this seventh generation model arrived, super mini buyers chose this car either because it was great to drive or because they had been offered a deal that was too good to turn down. There really wasn't another reason to buy one. This model changes all that. Smarter to look at, smarter to sit in and smarter to operate. In short, this is more than ever, a small car that super mini buyers simply can't ignore.